Hi there, Phil again. So this tip is about using garden stakes for your plants. Generally I suggest that you don't use stakes unless you have to, because if you use them the plant will tend to rely on the stake. It will treat the stake as though it was other trees growing in a forest and that the plant will grow up tall and without a great deal of strength. So therefore by having the stake and tying the plant to the stake, the plant will come to rely on that and it won't build up full strength. And when you do use a stake, I suggest that you tie the twine or whatever tie you use fairly loosely so the plant has got some movement and that swaying will build up strength. However, quite often we do need to use it, maybe on a young tree and also on tall thin flowers such as Dolphiniums or this hollyhock here. This hasn't needed to have a stake but I'm just using it as an example for today. Stakes can add quite a decorative element to a garden because they add that human touch, a degree of sort of structure to a garden which can look quite attractive. I'm going to discuss garden stakes in two types. First of all single stakes such as these ones here and then community stakes and by chance where I'm filming which isn't actually in my home today because there's tradespeople next door making a noise but I noticed there is actually a different form of stake here that the plant can actually grow through. Individual stakes, staking is usually for the purpose of preventing tall flowering spikes from blowing over or collapsing during heavy rain. Wooden stakes are generally a good choice, they are strong, flexible and usually environmentally friendly. As shown here they come in a range of sizes, taller ones being generally thicker. You may wish to use ones that haven't been treated with a preservative if you're concerned about adding chemicals to the soil. Personally I don't think that is much of a risk with modern treatments. You can see the greenish tint on the right hand stake. It, is, it has been treated and it is more costly. If you choose to use untreated wood these won't last as long especially if you leave them in the ground year round. Bamboo is similar to wood, although thinner. Like wood, it has an attractive natural appearance. Again, it comes in a range of lengths and thicknesses. Plastic stakes. I'm not a great fan of these as I haven't found them to be very strong. Provided that you lift them from the ground every year, they should last for a long time. However, they will be degraded by UV light. Here is a suggested process for using a stake. Preferably put the stake in before planting the individual plant to avoid damaging the roots. Push the stake into the ground to about 30 to 40 centimetres, 12 to 16 inches, enough to provide a secure support but still easy to remove when you wish. If the top of the stake is below head height there is a danger of poking it into the eye of a gardener while managing the garden. Notice that what I'm showing is a setup for filming but hopefully it makes you wince enough that you take notice. If there is a risk of this, put a protective plastic cap on top of the stake, something obvious, or use steel stakes that have a loop on top. I really like these steel ones that have a curl over the top. As the flowering stems develop, tie them to the stake. A flexible twine is useful as it allows free movement of the plant. An option that I like is natural twine, which has the advantage that it can be simply removed when deadheading and composted along with the garden plants, along with the flower parts. There is no need to attach the tie tightly as free movement of the wind will allow for the development of a robust stem. Check the tie periodically. As the flower stems grow taller you may need to adjust the tie. Further flower spikes may often be attached to the same stake. Remove the stake at the end of the growing season to allow for cultivation and soil maintenance. You may need to clean them if there is a risk of transmitting disease. Wooden and bamboo stakes would deteriorate if left in the ground indefinitely. Then there are growth or community systems. Some plants such as Solidago, Peony or Garden Phlox produce profuse flower stems which can be difficult to individually stake. In this case you can place stakes around the outside of the plant with a shed support. Solid loops usually made from steel are attached to one or several stakes to contain the overall plant. There is a danger with these that the plant settles or is blown against one side of the loop. You can see that with this system I'm showing with these dahlias there is an internal steel grid which will prevent this from happening. You can make a similar system yourself using four stakes with a grid of plastic coated wire, nylon fish netting or similar 
cut to the required size. It is important that the system is set up before the flower stems start to develop. This system provides very good support. A disadvantage is that the plant can get entangled with the netting, making dead heading or removal of the netting difficult. Note this elegant wicker support, which adds to the overall style of the garden. Modular systems which can be assembled on the site and can be made to whatever size and height you wish. Here I show a plastic type which can be simply clipped together and disassembled for convenient storage. Note that one of the stakes is bent. This is a common problem with plastic stakes which aren't usually very strong and can also degrade in sunlight. So that's it for garden stakes. I hope you found this useful and informative. If you did so, I would appreciate it if you could like this video and also subscribe to my channel and share this with other people because this helps my channel to grow. And thank you very much for watching this through to the end.